Hey, welcome back to Roscoe Reviews. In today's episode, we have a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to install a wall mount garage door opener. The one in the video is a Chamberlain. This process should be the same for the LiftMasters as well. Uh, there's a lot of steps to this, so it's going to take me a little while to get through them all. But we'll learn how to do it together. The first step, uh, decide which side of the garage door you want to put it on. And make sure that this will fit on your garage door. All of the requirements are on the Chamberlain website. I'm going to be mounting it to the left side of my garage door. So I'm going to be using this side of the opener. The first step is to put this collar on and set these set screws. And I'm going to use a half inch ratchet to tighten those down. You just want to kind of get them snug, but I mean fairly tight. It says about a quarter turn. And also we're going to start the mounting bracket. And it goes on the bottom corner. So this corner. I'm not going to want to tighten these up all the way right now. They use a 5 16 socket. But we're just going to want to get those started until we get it up there on the wall so we know how deep it's going to be. Right. That'll be good until we get it up there. Now I'm going to go ahead and hold it up there and I'll do my best to try to film it from the ground. Okay, the next step is to mount the unit to the wall. So the collar goes over the end. of the part that turns to raise it up that has the spring attached to it. So that should fit right over the end of that. Like so and then this bracket will mount to the wall down here. Tighten those on. The next step is to get the mounting bracket on the bottom screwed in. Drop my ratchet. And that will take a different one. A 3 8 comes with the mounting screws. Once you get both of the mounting screws in, then you'll want to tighten down the black screws that are holding the mounting bracket to the unit. That was all there was to mounting the main unit. Once that's up there, you can go ahead and set your uh, manual release. It ties onto this little cable at the bottom. Am I about there? Okay, and the next step will be the uh, automatic door lock. When mounting the automatic bolt lock for the door, it comes with these nifty little stickers that show you where to drill the holes and what size drill bit to use. There will be two holes for the screws that are 5 16 and then there's a 3 quarter inch hole in the middle. It says to mount it on the third wheel up and the bolt will come through and stop the wheel from going up. Um, be careful when you're drilling through here not to drill into the wheel. Okay, I have my holes drilled here and the lock will mount on the side like so using the little Phillips head screws. Once you have the lock mounted, uh, you can plug it in to the door. To access the plug, you got to open the panel 
and there's one labeled lock right inside. You run it up underneath the front side of the panel and bring the cord out of the side. You plug it into that one labeled lock. And then we'll use the staples that were provided to staple the cord to the walls to keep it out of the way. The next piece is the cable tension monitor. It looks like this. Uh, this part needs to rest on the cable. I'm going to do it on the same side as the opener, but you can mount it on either side. So it's going to mount to the wall like this. It needs to be two to six inches from the cable, from the cable spool, the top of it. So I had to add a little two by four there to make it the right depth so that I could mount this. And then I'm going to drill pilot holes for where the screws go and use these two inch screws that were provided. They're the same ones that mounted the opener itself. Now that we got the tension monitor mounted, I've run the line up and around and I'm going to plug it into the box. It's not real well labeled in here, but it's the green one that has two holes in it. And you'll need a little screwdriver, possibly you could get it with the thumbnail, to push down on the tabs to stick the wires in the holes. Next we're going to install the button. Uh, there's a little more to this than a normal button. There's a way to program leaving the door up for a certain amount of time and whatnot. And there's a motion sensor to turn the light on. Uh, First thing, you got to strip these wires and attach them back here. They're labeled red and white on the back of the button. And then I'll be mounting it right here. So I'm going to strip the wires real quick. To mount the button, you're going to start the bottom screw. And just put it in there enough the the button can slide down on it like so it's a little bit loose go a little more And then the second screw goes up in the top. Okay, then we're going to run the wire up to the garage opener. Once the switch is mounted to the wall, then you can plug it in to the opener. The red goes on the left. It's these four holes that are on the bottom. They're color coded, so red on the left, and then it's the first white one for the button. Just beat them up through the bottom. The one with the red stripe on the left. Again, with the screwdriver, you got to push down the little button. Feed it in there, and then the first white one. The instructions talk about several ways to mount the sensor brackets. Uh, this will shoot the beam across the about six inches off the floor or so, so that you don't squish someone in the door. Uh, I think the easiest way is to just kind of snap them on the rails. Kind of put it on there like that, and it down, and it'll snap. Just snaps on there. In the instructions, you can screw them to the floor and stuff, but that would take a lot of drilling out and everything. Snapping them on there seems to be good to me. You want them to be about the same height off the floor so that they can shoot each other. Mounting the sensors uses the little round bolt and the wing nut. And what you do is slide the bolt inside the sensor and then stick it through there. 
the hole in the bracket and tighten it down. You can probably put it on the inside or the outside of this. I'm going to try to stick it on the inside. And then you'll run the wire back up to your main unit. So for wiring up the sensors, it's color coded again. It's the last two holes you have left, black on the right and white on the left. And with the black stripe goes in the black. But this time, since there's two sensors, you've got to twist the lines together. So make sure you put two blacks together and the two whites together. And then put them in the correct hole. And we should be done wiring and we can uh, get it programmed and whatnot. The final step you'll need to do, besides plugging it in, of course, is once you've plugged it in, you'll need to set the limits on the door. So how you do that is you hold down on the black button until the light starts to flash. It just takes about a second. And then you'll release the black button and push it again and hold it until the door gets all the way up to where you want it to be to stop and then let it go. And then once you let it go, you press the button on the controller or the button on the wall, either one, and it saves that as the limit for the door. So start with it at the bottom, hold it down the button until it gets to the top, and then let it go, and press the button to save it. And then it should be set up and ready to go. Seems to work pretty well. I like it so far. It's very quiet. Um, it lifts. I, I have a large door. This was a 10 foot door, 10 foot tall. Uh, didn't have a problem with it. So, so far I like it. Uh, I'll see how it works out for the next, you know, six months or so. And then I'll update down in the comments below. Uh, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you back here next time.